So what's with the gloomy look? Left someone dear behind? Uh, yeah. You could say that. Been there. So, Nord Sunday, you better buckle up. We've got some nasty weather coming in. I heard. Sadly, caring about storms is a luxury people in my line of work are rarely afforded. Oh, and what kind of work is that? Special agent. Violent crimes. Central Bureau. Well, shit. You there. This is a restricted crime scene. At ease, Constable. Special Agent Anglin here. Oh, my apologies, Agent. I was expecting someone... older. I'll take that as a compliment. Now, brief me, please. Certainly, ma'am. The victim is Carl Oscarson, age 33. Stabbed to death by an unknown assailant. He worked here as a carpenter and was found early this morning by a co-worker who was sitting over there by the window. Got it. Sorry about the state of the crime scene. We're not used to this sort of thing. Oh, don't worry about it, Constable. This looks, uh, quite typical. Don't hold back on my account, ma'am. I can handle criticism. Good to hear. Now, give me a second while I examine the body. Sure, I'll be here. So, is this where you use your X-ray vision? My what? Come on, you have to be aware of the rumors. How agents like you are supposed to be equipped with some kind of advanced cybernetics? Let's just say I'm good at what I do. We'll leave it at that. Oh, didn't mean to overstep my boundaries. Hush, hush. Got it. My picture of Alex. <sighs> I miss him. The reason I'm here. I need to gather as much evidence as possible and try to get some kind of lead on the killer. My service pistol. It fires conventional projectiles using magnetic propulsion. It's loaded with 600 rounds of compressed alloy ammunition. The battery is the limiting factor, lasting for about 80 shots in quick succession. All right, we've got multiple knife-sized stab wounds to the chest. I don't see a murder weapon, so I take it none was found at the scene? That's right. All knives and sharp tools in the building have been accounted for, too. It looks like the victim was attacked directly from the front. I don't see any major defense wounds, so this was either a surprise attack, or the victim knew the perpetrator. What about any potential suspects, Constable? Did Carl have enemies? None as far as we know. He seemed to be well-liked among the guys here, but the man who found him might know more. There was a photo in his chest pocket. Thank you. 
Post-mortem, huh? That would suggest that he likely only touched the body after death. Hey there. What's your name? I'm Alfred. Carl's friend. Well, we were friends. Now he's gone. Are you doing okay? Do you have somebody to talk to after this? I'll be okay. Please just ask your questions so I can go home. Why don't you tell me about what happened this morning? Okay. I get up early for my morning smoke. I keep my smokes in my locker, so I came in here. I saw Carl lying in the corner. It was still kind of dark, so I thought he'd fallen and hurt himself. I ran over to him. That's when I noticed the blood, and I guess I was kind of in shock, so I tried to stop the bleeding, but then I felt how cold he was. I yelled for help. The guys came running, and then Josef, our foreman, sent someone to go get the police. Okay. When was the last time you saw Carl alive? Late last night, or around midnight. He stayed up with us playing cards, which is unusual. Unusual? How so? Well, it was rare for Carl to stick around in the evenings. He usually went out by himself. Oh. Do you know where he used to go? No idea. He didn't talk much about that. Maybe he went to the canteen to meet some friends. Anyway, Carl seemed a bit anxious last night. He seemed distracted. Got it. Thanks for the info. I should look at it myself first. That's enough questions for now. Okay. A row of personal lockers for the workers here. It's a bloody photograph of Carl and a young woman, taken fairly recently by the look of it. He's holding hands with the woman, but I can't discern her face. Too much damage to the photo. She's wearing a brass necklace. Could be relevant. A few more questions, if I may. Hey, do you know which one of these lockers belongs to Carl? Uh, yeah, it's number two, uh, second from the left. Okay, I'll check it out. Is there an extra key for it somewhere? I don't think so. As far as I know, Carl had the only one. Have a look at this picture. Do you know who the woman is? Uh. Yeah, that's just some old girlfriend of Carl's from ages ago. Is that so? Yes, the guy aged well. Any other questions? Look, I got this job because I have great instincts, and I know that you were lying to me. Maybe you're doing it for a good reason, or to protect someone. But all I want is to catch Carl's murderer. If you had nothing to do with what happened, you need to come clean now, for both of your sakes. I'm, I'm sorry. I gave him a promise. Well, the lady in the photo, Carl is still seeing her. Well, was, I suppose. Why wouldn't you tell me that from the beginning? It was a secret. Carl said they would both get in trouble if anybody knew. Why would they get into trouble? An affair? I didn't ask, but yeah, it could be. All right. Tell me everything you know about this woman. Carl said she lived somewhere north of town, but that's all I know. Okay. I believe you. Can you tell me a little bit about Carl? Sure. I've known him since I started working here four years ago. We instantly hit it off. He had a great sense of humor. He used to be so cheerful, you know? Always kidding around, always with a smile on his face. But then about a year ago, something happened. He became 
absent-minded and humorless. I know people can change, but this came seemingly from nowhere. Huh. What do you think caused the shift? I'm not sure, but maybe something to do with his secret relationship? Perhaps all that secrecy started to take its toll on him. That's enough questions for now. Okay. Looks pre-collapse, basically a glorified corner lamp. There's a coin slot on the side with a coin stuck in it. I can probably pull it out using some extra strength. Got the coin. Hey, I'm gonna go check out the dorm. Where's Carl's bed? Turn left and then go straight. I left the light on so it'd be easy for you to find. Gotcha. Be right back. Dirty laundry. Smells like machine oil. Both beds look recently used. Pens and paper. Nothing out of the ordinary. Huh. Odd place for a ventilation duct. Clean clothes and sheets. Nothing interesting. prints around a panel on the air duct. The panel is screwed on tight. I'll need some way of getting it loose. There was a small key hidden inside the duct. Doesn't fit. Guess it's for something else. Jeez, try not to wreck the place. No reason for alarm. I just needed to get this locker open. A pair of large boots with dirt under them. There was a piece of paper in one of the inner pockets. The note looks like it was written by a woman. It reads, Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. I think I'm almost done here. I should just talk to the constable before I go. Do you know who wrote this note to Carl? Afraid not. I don't recognize the handwriting. Hey, I think I'm done here. Oh, okay. Mind sharing your findings? It seems like the murder could be tied to a secret relationship Carl had with a woman. But I'm leaving all options open. Sounds reasonable. Do you have a lead to follow up on? Yes. I have reason to believe that Carl recently passed through an area with saffron plants somewhere in Nordsund. 
maybe I can correlate that with Carl's movements to the north of town when seeing that woman. Good. Meanwhile, we'll transport the body to the morgue and have an autopsy performed as soon as possible. Do you want us to keep the area sealed off? No need. I'm done here and won't come back. You can let the men get back to work. Very well. I'll let them know. By the way, how do I get to the police station from here? Just head straight east outside. You'll see it. Got it. See you later. Hello, deputy. What are you guarding? The residence of the first murder victim. The commissary told me to direct you to his office before going upstairs. I see. I'll go find him and come back later then. Sounds good, agent. Hey, what's happening here? Bit of an electrical problem with some fallen power lines. It's being taken care of, but it'll be a while. So I can't enter the museum? Well, you can, but only if electrocution is something you enjoy during working hours. What caused it? Did someone mess up, or was there some kind of environmental damage? Oh, well, we've had a windy week. An old tree fell down and ripped down a major power line. It's in a tricky spot. And due to how the grid is built up, I can't cut the power safely without affecting half the town. Sounds like a flawed design. Is that typical for electrical grids these days? Uh, not really. This power grid is quite old, constructed shortly after the collapse. That meant they had to improvise. They couldn't just clone existing power systems at the time, since those were reliant on service robots with <laughs> negligible safety concerns. So yeah, now I'm paying the price. The whole thing is riddled with hacks and workarounds, each one more dangerous than the next. I see. I don't envy such a hazardous work environment. How long will it take you to fix? Hard to say, but it should be done by tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. Looks like an old hovercraft. I don't need to go down to the ground right now. Doesn't look like I can enter the museum. All right, so this is the town square. That building with the emblem must be the police station. I'm surprised the Bureau got their thumb out of their ass. It's not like they could find Nordson on a map. I, for one, am grateful for their help. From what I hear, the person they sent is young, but quite capable. Optimistic as always, eh, Kurt? I guess we'll see. Ah, Agent Anglin. We've been expecting you. Councilwoman, I was told you'd be my Bureau contact here. That's correct. I'm Steena Ruth. And this here is Kurt Anderson, police commissary. Welcome, Agent. Enjoy your trip to the middle of nowhere? It was a bit bumpy, and way longer than I expected. Yeah, the train has seen better days. You'll find your luggage in your quarters, just through the door behind me. Thanks. I'll check it out later. So, you were probably confused as hell when we sent you straight to a crime scene, right? Kind of. I thought I was supposed to investigate a murder from last week. You were. But unfortunately, a second killing required your urgent attention. I assume there is some bureau procedures before I brief Agent England about the situation? Yes. Why don't you head to your office, and I'll send this youngling on her merry way when we're done. Very well. It was a pleasure to meet you, Agent. Likewise. I'm a bit confused here. Who do I report to? Only to me, as overseer of this district. The local police are at your disposal since they're legally required to aid you in the investigation. Got it. How would you like me to share my findings with you? Face to face, in the evenings. The balcony inside the local canteen is a good place to meet. 
Okay. I think I have what I need then. I'll go talk to the commissary. Good. We'll catch up later. Oh, but I have to ask. Tell me, how was it for you? What do you mean? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. We've both done it. Oh, you mean my... You mean the augmentation, the nanofluid injection. Sticking to the boring scientific terms, are we? Back in my time, we used to just call it taking the blue. Come on, let this old lady live a little. Tell me, how was your first kiss with the blue? A sense of enlightenment and acute awareness washed over me. A crystal clear lucidity I had never felt before. <laughs> I remember that moment like it was yesterday. What I wouldn't give to feel like that again. No side effects, I hope. We wouldn't want you to get compromised in dangerous situations. Not yet, but I know what to look out for. Mild hallucinations, nightmares, burning sensations in the limbs, the occasional migraine, things like that. Yeah, that covers the usual suspects. All right, I think you're good to go then. We shouldn't keep the commissary waiting. All right, Agent. Would you like me to brief you about the first murder? Yes, please. Maya Strand, 41 years old, the caretaker of the Nordson Museum. She was found by the janitor on the floor near the exhibits early last Wednesday. Just like Carl, she was stabbed. No witnesses, no evidence. Killer practically a ghost. No signs of a forced entry. So either the entrance was open or she let him in herself. What about her residence? Anything out of the ordinary in there? Nothing, as far as we could tell. But we left the place as we found it, if you want to have a look. She lived upstairs from the museum. Noted. The crime scene is no longer intact, though, correct? Afraid so. The museum is important to Nordson, so we had the place cleaned out pretty quickly. Sorry to hear that. I guess bureaucrats messing up police work isn't just a city problem, huh? You have no idea. Sometimes I feel like I'm spending half my time arguing with those fools. One more thing. I'd like to see Maya's body, if that's possible. Of course. We brought it out of the freezer this morning. You'll find it in the morgue, over at the clinic. Dr. Pearson, our physician, is awaiting your arrival. Good. I'll head there when we're done. That's all I needed. Very well. 